Hello and welcome to another Thought of the Day. My name is Paul Aldridge. I'm one of the ministers of the Estuary Elam Group of Churches here in Essex. And as I arrived this morning, looked out of the window, I saw how miserable, dark, um, wet and cold it looked. We are in the middle of January 2020. And the story I want to tell you today was somewhat different. I want to tell you about the time I travelled to South Africa. It was about 20 years ago I had the opportunity to travel to South Africa on mission for three weeks with a team from Westcliff Elam Church in Essex. And it always amazes me how God can use us for his glory even when we don't even realise it. I've called this thought of the day, God given opportunities. Today I'm going to share this story with you and it's a true story of what happened to me whilst I was in South Africa. The team from Westcliff Elam and I made all the arrangements and decided on a date when we would travel to South Africa. I think it was in, a no in November time when it wasn't too hot in, in Africa. On the day we were to travel to Africa, we all met up and travelled by train to the airport. On arrival at the airport, we booked in our flight and eventually boarded the aircraft. It was to be a very long 10 hour journey in economy class. The flight we were on was a night flight and most of the group that I was with managed to sleep through the entire journey. Unfortunately, I found it very difficult to sleep because there wasn't a lot of leg room in economy flight. Most of you that know me would know that I can't bend my left leg very much. So that was the reason I found it more uncomfortable than everybody else. So I ended up walking around the aircraft most of the night talking to people and looking out of the window. Looking out of the window as we were flying across the Sahara Desert, I could see, which I later found out, was the oil fields and the huge fires that cascade out of the, the oil field chimneys or whatever they are, I'm not sure. But one of the um, flight attendants told me that that's what it was, these huge flames you could see, even from 30,000 feet as we were flying over the Sahara Desert. It was incredible. More incredible than that was the lightning storms that I saw as I looked to the side, out the side window, and I could see slightly to the front of the aircraft, the lightning storms flashing across the sky for a very long period of time, lighting up the sky, huge white flashes across the sky. I have never seen anything like it. Obviously, most of us would have probably seen lightning storms at home in the skies which are incredible, but when you're flying at 30,000 feet and these lightning flashes are all around you, apart from being a pretty scary, it was an amazing sight. Anyway, on arrival at Johannesburg Airport the next day, I was very tired, I was worn out. To be honest, I was dead beat. After going through customs, we waited in the airport car park to be picked up and taken to the house where we were to stay. When we arrived at the house where we were going to stay, we discovered that there was no electric, no hot water, and the bed that I was going to sleep on for the next few weeks was a child's bed, which was fine, the problem was the child used to wet the bed and there were stains all over the mattress. And I don't mind telling you, 
at this point, I was uh, just ready to get on the next flight home and come home. Anyway, we went about our business, got our rooms ready, unpacked our bags and went out for a, a walk around. Of course, after a good night's sleep, things look much better the next day. What we didn't realise was that we was the house where we were staying was in the middle of a black township, which was fine by us, but we did cause quite a bit of a traction in the township. When we were walking or driving through the township, people would wave and want to talk to us. Some would shout out, look, there are the pastors from England. It was amazing how news traveled through the township. Everybody seemed to know who we were. And everyone was so welcoming and friendly. Of course, I could go on and on and tell you lots of stories about what happened whilst we were in South Africa. But I want to get to the relevant point of this story. You remember me saying that there was no electric in the house where I was staying. Well, at the time, I had a flat top haircut. After all, it was 20 years ago. Let me explain what a flat top is. It's where they cut your hair, well, shave your head almost, up the sides, and then they leave the top sticking up, and then they get what they call a flat top comb and trim your hair so it is actually dead flat right across the top and sticking up at the front. So, you might all laugh, but I needed a hair dryer to make this hairstyle go into the shape that it needed to go in. And of course, I didn't have a hair dryer. So, when I woke up each morning, my hair looked like I had had an electric shock and it was just all over the place. To cut to the point, I needed to vi visit a barber's. This is where the fun started. Let me tell you what happened. My friend Temba, who is a South African guy who took us out there, he used to go to our fellowship at Westcliff. He said to me, I'll take you to my barber's shop and you can get your hair cut off, which exactly what I needed. So we, we drove to the, the uh, hair barbers or the hairdressers in the middle of this black township. And you can imagine, as we were queuing up outside, ready to take a seat to be, have my hair cut in the barbers, it caused quite a stir because, as I said, we was in the middle of a black township. White people just didn't go there, and white people certainly didn't go and have their hair cut in a black township. After waiting quite a while, I managed to get the barber to cut my hair. First of all, the young man was quite surprised that I was having my hair cut there, and he wasn't used to cutting the sort of hair that I've got. My hair is a lot different to an African man's hair, so he found that rather awkward. Anyway, to cut to a, the point, the young man, apparently about two weeks after we got home from Africa, we found out that this young man, he thought it was an absolute miracle that a white man would go into a black township and have their hair, hair cut. And because of the visit to this barber shop, this young man who cut my hair gave his life to Jesus. Absolutely incredible. You see, the thing is, we never know where or how God is going to use us for his glory. I didn't expect this to happen, and I don't suppose that young man in that hairdressers in the middle of a black township expected a white man to walk into his shop on that day 
and asked him to cut my hair. The main thing is to always be ready to be surprised with what God might do when we say to God, use me. We never know what God's going to do. Romans 1.16 says this, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and then for the Greek. And 2 Corinthians 2.14 says this, But thank God he has made us his captives and continues to lead us into Christ's triumphal procession. Now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. And that day it was certainly like a sweet perfume when I found out that that man had given his life to Christ. The most amazing thing is I didn't even preach to the man. I was just in the right place at the right designated God time for this young barber in the middle of a black township. The Bible says in Luke 15, 10, in the same way, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God when one sinner changes his heart and life. God never ceases to amaze me with what he can do in our lives when we least expect it. Well, thanks for listening. Bye for now. God bless.